untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Blue Red Burn deck featuring new cards from Innistrad, Crimson Vow, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Most notably, we're playing with Erith, Tormented Prophet, the 3 mana 2 4 legendary human wizard, since if we would draw a card, exile the top 2 cards of our library instead, and we may play those cards this turn. So an incredibly powerful effect which essentially doubles up our card draw, although it does come with a few deck building restrictions, ideally our curve is low so we can more easily cast all the spells we exile with Erith, and then we should also be playing more proactive cards that we can cast no matter the board state, so we can always get value, as opposed to playing counter spells for instance, which would be a bit of a nombo with the ability. And then of course a burn deck is a perfect home for Erith, as we can always point those cards directly at the opponent's face if we don't need to kill a creature instead. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we're also playing with the full playset of Ancestral Anger from Crimson Vow, a 1 mana sorcery, since target creature gains Trample and gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is 1 plus the number of cards named Ancestral Anger in our graveyard, and we get to draw a card, so we can potentially deal a few extra points of damage with it, and then it's a 1 mana cantrip, perfect to synergize with Erith, and can also help untap our Thermo Alchemist, one of the more important cards in the deck, the 2 mana 03 Human Shaman has Defender, can tap to deal 1 damage to each opponent, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we can untap Thermo Alchemist, so it can start dealing more and more damage. Then at 2 mana we also have Bloodthirsty Adversary, a 2-2 Vampire with Haste, so we can play it early if needed, and when it enters a battlefield we can also pay 2 and a red any number of times, and if we do it enters with that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and we get to exile that many instants or sorceries with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard, we exile those and cast them without paying their mana cost, so the Adversary can maybe replay a burn spell out of our graveyard late game if we've got the mana to sink into it, but if we exile it with Erith we can always just play for 2 mana instead, and still get some extra damage in. Also a nice creature to target with our Ancestral Anger. And then looking at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got Consider as another cheap cantrip to trigger Thermo Alchemist, exile a few cards with Erith, and potentially put some cards in the graveyard as well. Play with Fire can deal 2 damage to any target, and if we target our opponent we also get to Scry 1. Then at 2 mana we've got Royal Eruption, dealing 3 damage at sorcery speed, can also be kicked later in the game to potentially deal 5 damage instead. And then of course a blue-red deck has to be playing Expressive Iteration, which does not draw cards, but sometimes if you have an Erith in play it can actually be an advantage to stock some cards in our hand, as opposed to put them all in exile, so Iteration just a nice card draw effect. And then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Prismari Command, a flexible instant that can deal 2 damage to any target, draw 2 and discard 2, which can potentially let us exile 4 cards if we want. And then we can also make a treasure or destroy an artifact, can potentially blow up an Asika's Chariot from the opponent. And then finally 2 copies of Igneous Inspiration, dealing 3 damage to any target, and letting us learn out of our 7 card sideboard in best of 1, including Environmental Sciences, Teachings, as well as Introduction to Prophecy for card draw, Start from scratch can deal 1 damage or destroy an artifact, we've got Elemental Summoning and Mascot Exhibition to make a few creatures, and finally Introduction to Annihilation as more removal, so plenty of ways to untap our Thermo Alchemist with our lessons as well. Then other cards I did consider, at 1 mana we could be playing Fading Hope as a nice bounce spell, especially useful against green creature decks where their creatures might survive or burn spells, although if we exile it against a control deck it's not going to be very useful. And then we could also be playing with Serpentine Curve at 4 mana, since it also tracks the cards exiled that we maybe weren't able to cast with Erith, but it's also a 4 mana card and our instant and sorcery count isn't quite high enough for it to be amazing. And then our mana base includes two copies of Den of the Bugbear as an extra creature land to deal a few extra points in the late game, then eight beautiful basic mountains, six basic islands, four of the new storm-carved coast, which completes the cycle from Midnight Hunt, as well as four of the blue-red pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. A couple cantrips to hit our land drops early, and then Erith to pull us ahead. Playing on a nice new battlefield. So I'm okay casting a consider turn one just to find a land or maybe a two drop. Alright, the rest can have a look. Can't wait on casting consider until after that resolves. Luckily, they can take our key card. 
takes a consider. And I'll draw the mountain. Right, backup Erith is always useful. So, hmm, I guess I'll wait on playing the pathway even though they know about it. Since I don't know if I want double blue or double red yet. Most likely double red. And for specimens, their opponent's a black, kind of grindy sacrifice deck. Okay, time to play Erith, and then now I guess we'll play on blue since we drew Den of the Bugbear. Although then again, if that comes into play tapped, I might want more red available if we exile a couple red cards with Erith. And we're also very likely to start playing lands from exile instead of our hand. One man available, could still see a removal spell here like eaten alive. We don't. Alright, Ancestral Anger and Consider, so we're gonna get to exile a couple more cards here. I think we start with Anger since I actively want to put that in my graveyard, so the second one also becomes better. Alright, there's our lands and a play with fire. So probably going to consider and then don't need an extra lands. More play with fires exiled but sadly no second red. Alright so just point this at our opponent's face but I can attack first. So we'll hit for three. And point this at our opponent's face. And then do I want to draw a royal eruption? It's okay, I guess, sure. So that turn illustrates why having access to more red mana can be useful in this deck. Deadly Disputes sacks the Pest, which we also could have killed with Play With Fire, although it would have been awkward if our opponent had a Village Rights in hand. So our opponent back up to 18. And next turn we've got a Royal Eruption incoming, which is not quite enough to kill Skullport Merchants. Another Erith. So let's Anger so we can attack past the Merchants. Exile a couple more cards. Nice. Alright, so I'm probably going to attack. And then Prismari Command plus Royal Eruption could kill Merchant if I care about doing that. But they might Chum Block instead, in which case we'll take a different approach. So let's attack. Opponent takes it. Could even destroy the opponent's treasure token with Prismari Command. And then make my own treasure to still cast Royal Eruption. It's kind of a cute play. Don't hate it. So Prismari commands, make a treasure, destroy an artifact. And then cast a royal eruption while we can. Opponent down to 11. And the more mana we have available, the more cards we can cast from exile. So we won't need to waste additional play with fires we exile, for instance. Merchant into deadly disputes. They might want to hit our land drops here, which they did. Another Ancestral Anger, it's looking great. So that's probably step one. Hope there's no removal and response. Alright. So I can hit for five. And then... Probably just gonna cast the Ignis Inspiration. Alternatively, I could Prismari Command with a draw to discard two mode, just to hit a land drop, also make a treasure, so I can also Inspiration. But that doesn't seem all that worth it. So let's attack. Opponent considering chumping. That's fine. Mm. 
And then we'll just Inspiration face. Or I could again try to destroy the treasure. Is that even worth it? I don't think so. And then... Could go for Mascot Exhibition to give me a bit of late game here, since we're close to land 7. If they kill Erith, we've got a backup. Royal Eruption with Kicker is also close. And we've got a Den now to apply pressure, so... I like my spots. Opponent has a Shadow's Verdict. So now I can activate Den of the Bugbear, which would hit them for 4 down to 3. And an unkicked Royal Eruption is enough to close out the game. Even if our opponent had one more life point, I think I still prefer attacking with Den of the Bugbear as opposed to casting Mascot Exhibition, as that way a kick to Royal Eruption next turn could close out the game, as opposed to playing the Exhibition and maybe have our opponent cast another Sweeper. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, sadly a quick update, the servers are currently having some issues and I'm unable to join any additional games, so I had to make the difficult decision of just uh, calling it quits here for today's video. I wish I could feature a few more games to show the deck in action, but at least we get to see Irith do its thing, and uh, hopefully that will satisfy you until tomorrow. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.